friends and welcome back to another video on factorization where we're just going to look at easy medium hard examples this is what we've done in class so this is actually um, mainly um, aimed at my students in my class where I gave them the sums and I just want to go through and explain each and every type of um, factorization that you can get with all these different sums so it's the students also asked me in my class, like, are you going to tell us this is an HCF and this is a trinomial? It's not given like that. So we always have to look out. If it's given to us, is it um, an HCF? Is there something you can pull out? That's what you start off with. Then after that, is it two terms? Then it's a difference of two perfect squares. And if it's three terms, it's a trinomial. So step one, always check for an HCF. Step two, is it a uh, two two terms? Then it's a difference of two perfect squares. Is it three terms? Then it's a trinomial. All right. Okay, and you should know the basis of of how to set up your factorization after that. So let's quickly look at the easier types of um, sums that could be given. All right. So over here, start off with an HCF. I already see that there's a five that I can pull out. I can pull out an x squared and a y. So I'm going to take out a five x squared sorry and i cannot take out a y because y there's no y present in both terms so now what is left so i take out 5x squared and what you're going to do is you're going to divide um 15x squared with 5x squared and you're going to divide out the positive 10x squared y with 5x squared so 15 divided by 5 is 3 and x squared divided by x squared falls away plus 10 divided by 5 is 2 the x squareds cancel out and 2y and that is what you are left with okay same with number b i'm going to start with an hcf um take out between 12 and 18 you can take out 6 and then x to the power 4 and x to the power 6 you take the one with the lowest exponent and then y to the power 4 or y to the power 7, you take the one with the lowest exponent. And then what is left in brackets thereafter? 18 divided by 6 is 3. x to the power 6 minus 4. Remember when you divide out with the same base exponents, you keep your same base and you subtract your exponents. And the y to the power 4, y to the power 4 cancels out. Then a positive 12 divided by a positive 6 gives you a positive 2 and x to the power 4 cancels out and then y to the power 7 minus 4 which gives you 3 okay not so bad number c so over here we've got a hcf of a common bracket so i'm going to highlight so this could have easily just have been like a like a b or a c so if you had, I always explain it with a normal um, one. So if you've got 7ak plus 8bk, you would have taken out what is evident in both a k. And then what is left? 7a plus 8b. Now instead of the k being a k, the k is now a bracket. You can also, I also represent it with hearts. So this is the same as a heart. So we're going to take out 2 minus 3b as a bundle. And then what is left? So if you divide away here with 2 minus 3b, you'll see that only 7a is left. Plus, if you divide away here with 2 minus 3b, you'll see what's left is a positive 8b. Okay, so those will get harder as we go because we do swap the terms around and change their signs as well. But we'll look at those when we get there. Okay, and then just a straightforward trinomial. Always set up two brackets. The signs are different. The first one's a minus. The x splits. And then what times what gives you 60? If you add or subtract, it gives you 7. All right, so if you look at the factors of 60, you'll have um, 10 times 6. But if you add or subtract, it doesn't give you negative 7. And think, let's think of 12 times 5. 12 times 5, yes, 12 times 5 gives you 60. And 12 uh, or negative 12 plus 5 will give you that negative 7. Okay, so your factors are 12, 
and 5. And then you just always need to go and double check. Minus 12 plus 5 does give you negative 7. And a negative 12 times a positive 5 does give you negative 60. All right, with number E, we're going to take out a highest common factor first. I can take out a 4. And then what is left, if you say 64 divided by 4, it gives you 16. So then we're left with a 4, and that is a difference of two perfect squares. So you must always, after HDF, ask yourself, can I go any further? Is it two terms inside that is left? Is there a minus in the middle? Then it's a difference of two perfect squares. So it's going to be x, sorry, not x squared, x minus 4, x plus 4. So remember with the difference of two perfect squares, you always have two brackets that's exactly the same except for there's a minus and a plus. How did I get the x? You square root the first term to get x. And how did I get the second term? You square root the 16. Okay. Then let's look at the medium ones. Okay. So over here, can you see? Okay. All right. There's a bracket. That's the same. A plus 2 and 2 plus A. Are they actually the same? So at first glance, they look very much similar, but a plus 2 is, is a different position is 2 plus a. But now you can go and write this 2 plus a as just a plus 2 because 2 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 2. Because they're both positive, it doesn't actually matter if you just go and swap it around. So you don't have to show this step, but I'm just going to do it um, to show you how it's done. And then the 2 plus a, I'm just going to swap around and a plus 2. Now you've got a common bracket that you can take out. And what is left? P minus 3. Okay. Medium ones. We've got a pi that's the same. We've got, uh, let's try another. We've got an r squared. We've got an r to the power 3 and an r squared. So if you take out, you take the one with the... Um, exponents you take the one with the lowest exponent so between 4 2 and 8 can you see that you can pull out a 2 you can easily divide all those three terms with a 2 you're going to take out a common pi and you're going to take out r to the power of 2 what is left so if you divide 4 pi r squared with 2 pi r squared you're going to be left with 2 minus r plus 8 divided by 2 gives you 4 and pi r squared pi r squared um, div divides out and becomes 1 okay now very very important you must always clean up your brackets I'm just going to write it here clean up clean up everybody clean up we never ever want brackets that has like terms inside of them so 2 plus 4 is 6 minus r and that is then your final answer Okay, so please, you will only get one mark instead of two marks if you don't further simplify. Okay, all right, number C. Again, we've got common, it looks like the, the a common bracket. But now, instead of having two positives, we've got a negative and a positive. So you cannot just go swap it around. Because if you just go swap it around, you'll be left with negative n plus 2 which is not the same as this one over here in minus 2. So I'm going to show you, you have to change the sign in the middle. And by doing so, all the signs thereafter will change. All right, so I just want to actually explain this. How, how did we come about to say, but you can do this. So if I've got 5 minus 3 plus 1, you'll see that 5 minus 2 gives you 3. But now there's a trick. Let's say we wanted to write 5 plus. So then you can change the positive as long as every sign thereafter changes uh, with the terms following. So a positive 3 will become a minus 3 and a positive 1 will become a minus 1. So let's see if it gives me, give, sorry, gave me. Let's see if it gives me the same value as 3. Minus 3 minus another 1 is minus 4. Oh, sorry. Minus 3 minus another one. Um, do, 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 do. 5 minus 3 plus 1 is 4. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I'm explaining it incorrectly. Let's just start again with that one. 5 minus 3 plus 1 is 4. So it gives you 1. 
So let's see if I change the sign there in the middle and change every sign there after if it also gives me a positive one. So it's 5 plus minus 3 minus another one is minus 4 and 5 minus 4 also gives you 1. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. So let, let me explain it here with this side n minus 2. So I'm going to change the sign in the middle to a positive. Now every sign thereafter changes. So the positive 2 becomes a negative 2 and the negative n becomes a positive n. And by doing that and just swapping my terms around now, so I'm just going to swap them around now, n minus 2, you will see that you've got then common brackets finally. Okay, so then I'm going to take out the common bracket and what is left? m plus 2n. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So what do we do? If the brackets look very similar, we change the sign in the middle and then every sign thereafter changes. We swap the two terms around and then your bracket will be the same. So you actually get a mark for changing the sign. Then you've got a mark for swapping around and then your last mark will be for taking out the HCF of the common brackets. Okay, over here starting off with the HCF I'm going to pull out a 2 that is common and an A and then what is left? A minus 1. Oh, I don't know why I've put this with the medium one. Sorry, this one is actually quite an easy one because afterwards there's nothing else to be done. So sorry for that one. That's just the easy peasy one in there. Okay, over here. All right, so now we've got an x minus y, a bracket to the power 2, and we've got a normal x minus y. Okay, so I'm just going to do another sum here on the side just to, to give you an example. So what if I had 2 and instead of saying x minus y, I'm going to write an x squared. So the x represents an x minus y plus 3 and the x minus y represents an x. What would you have done? You would have pulled out a common x. x to the power 1. Why? Because you take the one with the lowest exponent. And then what is left? 2 x, there's one x left there, plus 3. And now let's look on the side where I just replaced the x with the x minus 1 bracket. So again, what would you have taken out? You take out one bracket, x minus y. Then what is left? Can you see here you said 2x? So 2 and then there's one bracket left after taking out one bracket. Because if you had to divide this over here with x minus y, can you see that you would be left with a 2? and 1x minus y's. Okay, then plus 3 because that will cancel out the x minus y. Okay, so now we have to clean up our brackets. We are left with x minus y and yeah, we never ever want a bracket within a bracket. So we're going to clean up our distribution and then we are done. All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, just look over here. So yeah, instead of saying x minus y, I had a bracket of x minus y squared. A bracket of x minus y. So I take out a bracket of x minus y and what is left? 2x minus y plus 3. Alright, so instead of just having one term, it's one bracket. Okay, move on to the harder ones. Alright. First of all, why is this one hard? We need to go and change. Do you see these terms? The, the brackets almost look the same, but they're not exactly the same. So I've got a 2x minus y squared, and I'm going to move a little bit faster. The positive becomes a negative, and then what happens? The positive y is going to become a negative y, and the negative x is going to become a positive x. Then I'm just going to swap my two terms around so that they look exactly like that first terms bracket and then I'm going to say all right I've got one x minus y and one and two x minus y's so you take the one with the lowest exponent okay and then what is left 
let me do it in another color sorry if i divide out here with x minus y what is left a two and a one x minus y bracket and if i divide away here with x minus y i've got a negative three left okay so our final answer after cleaning up would be 2x minus 2y minus 3. Okay, and that's fully factorized. Over here, now we've got 2 and we've got 3 similar brackets. So we're going to take the one with the lowest exponent out. Then what is left? A 3 and 1 a plus 4 bracket. And then minus 6. Why? Because this cancelled out exactly what we've taken out and you are left with a minus 6. So then we're just going to clean up and make sure everything is simplified. So it's going to be 3a plus 3 times 4 is 12 minus 6. And if you thought that you would end there, you would lose one mark. Why? Because you must always make sure that your brackets are fully simplified. So plus 12 minus 6 gives you a positive. Um, choo -choo -choo, sorry, um, uh, 12 minus 6 gives you a positive 6. And if you thought it ended there, then you would also lose one mark. Because in your brackets, you can never have an HCF. So in those brackets, can you see that there's a 3 that you can squeeze out of there? So if I squeeze out the 3, the 3 can go stand at the back, the 3 can go stand in the front. It doesn't matter. As long as if, if you put it in the middle, then it must just be in brackets. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze out a common 3 there. Then I'm left with a plus 4 squared. And inside your bracket, a plus 2. Okay, and that is fully, fully simplified. A lack of hard one. Okay, why is this one hard? It doesn't look so hard, but you're going to see it's going to go and go and go forever and a day. So do I have a difference of two perfectly square rootable sides? I do, I do. So it's a difference of two perfect squares. And 8 divided by 2 gives you x to the power 4 plus 1 and x to the power 4 minus 1. But hang on, this one is also a difference of two perfect squares. So he can go further. The x to the power 4 plus 1 comes along. He drags along. Why can't I factorize that one fully or more? Because there's a positive and it's not a difference of two perfect squares. And then this blue one, I'm going to keep, sorry, I'll keep going in blue. Two brackets. And then if you square root the first term, it's x to the power 2 minus 1. And x to the power 2 plus 1. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. This one here in the middle is also a difference of two perfect squares. So he can go further. So then I'm going to have my red bracket, x to the power 4 plus 1, which couldn't go further. Then I'm going to write down this one, because he also couldn't go further because of the plus. And then this one I'm going to factorize as two brackets. And then the, the square root of x squared is x minus 1 and x plus 1. And finally, so that would have been 1, 2, 3, perhaps 4 marks. And if you didn't see that, you would have just gotten 1 mark. So always check, can you go further? Can you go further factorizing? Okay. Then the last one, we never ever start off with a negative. So we're going to take out a negative minus 16. And then you are left with the difference of two perfect squares, n minus 4 and n plus 4. Okay, there could have been another way of doing it. What if we just swap the two terms around and then you have 16 minus n squared. And then immediately you could have factorized as a difference of two perfect squares, 4 minus n and 4 plus n. So both of these would be correct. Your teacher just had to check which way you did it. All right, because if you had to distribute this negative in again and simplify this, it will bring you back to the same answer. Okay, now the last one. Um, it looks like a trinomial, but it's in a different format, or it's not in the something squared, something x, just a number. And we've got an HCF, and we start off with a negative. So let's start by pulling out a negative and an HCF. So I'm going to take out a negative, 
And can you see that there's a common 5 that I can take out everywhere? So what is left? Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is a positive 1. Negative 5x squared divided by negative 5 is a positive x squared. And a negative 10x divided by negative 5 gives you a positive 2x. Okay, so now the negative 5 drags along. And yeah, I'm just going to put it in order. So this one should go first, then the 2x, then the number. So it's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. And that is now in our form of a trinomial. And then we can say, all right, two brackets. The signs are the same. They are both positives. So it's an x plus and an x plus. And then what times what gives you 1 if you add or subtract gives you 2. And that is definitely a 1. Okay, and then you can go and just squeeze those two together and say that it's x plus 1 squared. All right, and that is it. Shame, thank you so much for watching. I hope these help a lot. Um, I know it's difficult with factorization just to get thrown with examples and uh, especially if it's a mixture between all of them. But this is the way you should be able to tackle um, factorization for the future, especially in grade 10, 11 and 12. Nobody ever tells you this is an HDF and this is a difference of two perfect squares and this is a trinomial. You should be able to recognize those three main types of factorization yourself. Okay, hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Thanks, eh? Bye.